the Anycubic Viper, a 3D printer with a lot of features and a very decent price tag. But what do I think about it after printing several things on this machine? My review about the Anycubic Viper here on Zachary's 3D Prints. Hello, I'm Zachary. So the Anycubic Viper. At this mo moment, the Anycubic Viper is priced at 349 US dollars. But what do you get for this price tag? The printing volume is 245 times 245 times 260 millimeters. So that is a pretty normal standard size. It has an auto bed leveling system, not with a BL touch, not with an inductive sensor, but in this case, it has a strain gauge, which means that there is a metal bracket that supports the hot end. And well, during the auto bed leveling sequence, the nozzle is tipping on the build plate and also forming in this kind of way, a mesh leveling system. This machine has no leveling knobs, which makes leveling a whole lot easier when using the strain gauge. So pretty similar like the Creality CR6SE. This has a normal 0.4 millimeter nozzle. The temperature for the nozzle is up to 260 degrees Celsius. The bed is going to he be heated up till 110 degrees Celsius. The power supply unit is 350 watts and the whole machine runs on 24 volts. And we have also a nice LCD touchscreen, which looks amazing and it is oriented in the vertical position. And the machine has for the X and for the Y axis timing belts, which you can also adjust when Need it. This machine has a nice tool drawer where you can store all your tools in for your machine. So you don't need to search for your tools when you put them back in the right place. Sometimes I did forget to do that. And you have also a normal size SD card that goes into the machine. Further, you have a USB type B connector to connect this machine to your laptop or PC when needed. This machine has a 32-bit board with the silent stepper drivers. So the only thing when you hear when you are printing with this machine are the fans. But well, that is pretty similar with all of the machines nowadays. It's not a direct drive, it uses a Bowden tube. And also the extruder, it's a Bowden style extruder, no direct drive in this case. And it uses a Titan Aero uh, extruder case, which is a clone, but it runs very nicely. You have to dial it in when you are going to start the first time with printing on this machine. There is a filament run out sensor. I also know that there is a power resume function. So when something happens during your absence and the filament runs out or you have a power loss, after restoring it, you can just continue with printing. Like mentioned, there is a textured PEI spring steel sheet on this machine. It's a very nice sheet. You can also use the back, which I'm not keen on using that side. Maybe in the future I'm going to do that. But this one, this surface I use the most, as you can see. On the back side, there are two Z lead screws to push the X gantry up and down the Z axis. They use optical sensors for the end stops for the Z axis, which is very nice because it is on both sides. So when the machine is going down, the board will compensate for both sides. On the side, there is a filament spool holder, the plastic one. Uh, it's pretty similar like the CR6SE has, but I use a different kind of setup with having the spool holder on the back side of the machine so that the height isn't that high anymore. So the print results of the Anycubic Viper. What do I think of it? Well, basically I use normal 0.2 millimeter as a standard for my layer heights. In Cura, but also in Prusa, I use the profile from the Creality Ender 3 Pro with ABL. In Prusa, they have a preset 
profile for the Creality and the 3 with ABL. So the bed probing is going to work very nicely. But other than that, you need to change the width and the length and also the height of the machine to you know, be able to print as maximum size what is possible on this machine. Everything that I had coming out of this machine, I had zero problems with it. So, meaning no bad prints, no misprints, no spaghetti, nothing really. I am very happy with the print results that came out of this Anycubic Viper. If you are looking for a decent profile for Cura, check the profile for the Creality and the 3 Pro and also change the start G code, putting a G29 after the G28 to enable the auto bed leveling feature. For the Prusa slicer, just use the Creality and the 3 Pro. Pro with ABL profile, change the printing volume of this printer and you're good to go. So what do I think about the Anycubic Viper? What I don't like about the Anycubic Viper? Let's start with that. Well, maybe you heard it or maybe you didn't. Well, I do need to say that I do like machines where the filament spool holder is not always on the top of this machine, but also not on the side. So as you can see, I have a separate spool holder on the side. That is because I had it somewhere else stored. And having the filament spool on the back side, I would recommend when using that. The curve is not that big and it goes all the way from the bottom to the top. So I would like to see if manufacturers are going to put a filament spool holder on the back side of the machine instead of on the top or on the side because it makes the printer pretty large. I did hear that the strain gauge on several of the Anycubic Viper printers were breaking or were very loose. So I don't know if I was lucky with this one, but I do need to say that when I used it, I didn't have any problems at all. And also one thing that I do like to see in future machines, a silicon sock around the heater block. Why is that? Firstly, also keep the heat on the inside and also to keep the heater block as clean as possible. The sound of this display. Some sounds you can turn off, but the startup sound you cannot eliminate. So, well, I don't think it's a really problem, but if I can think about something, that is one of the things that I also like to see improved on a future machine. What do I like about this machine? Well. Um, basically almost everything. You can tension the belts if you would like. You don't have those leveling knobs, but you have a screw with a Allen key. You can tighten or loosen the belts on the Y and on the X axis. It has a dual lead screw set up, which has a very high precision. Also the optical sensors. I do like it that it is on both sides and it always makes sure that it is level on the machine, so that it is perpendicular on the machine. There is also a light here, so when printing you can see what you are printing. It's, it's a nice machine. If you are interested in buying this machine, check out the links in the description of this video. Some can be affiliate links to support this channel without you paying anything extra. If you would like to buy this machine somewhere else, hey, feel free to do so. This video is supported by these awesome Patreon supporters. Lawyer Moses, The Lightspeed and Fixum Dude. Thank you guys for your awesome support. You can also support this channel by checking the Patreon link in the description of this video. If you're still watching this video, thank you, you are amazing. On the end card, there's several videos that you can watch. And also feel free to check out the merch in the merch store. Please like this video, share this video with other people and on social media. And hey, let's make awesome things with 3D printing. Zachary 3D Prints. Bye-bye.